Elvish. I learned Orc language. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. Okay, this is not part of the. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm Dana. This is Words That Move Me. Thank you for being here. I am stoked about this episode for many, many reasons. One of them being there is an obscure Lord of the Rings trivia section in this episode. Gasp, that that hasn't happened before. I am so excited about this. I love this so much. Uh, even if you don't love Lord of the Rings and or obscure Lord of the Rings trivia, which I simply cannot comprehend, but we'll take that up another time, you will be interested in this ep episode because Tobias, whoa, his work is remarkable and so is he. And I'm excited to share this conversation with you. But first, let's do some wins. Let's see. Today, I am celebrating a reunion of sorts. Uh, this was not an actual reunion. This is a birthday party for the one and only Christopher Scott. If you do not already know Chris, I'm going to go ahead and link to a podcast episode featuring the In the Heights choreography team. Chris was the head choreographer of that film and many, many, many more. Uh, much love to you, Chris, and thank you for bringing some of my favorite movers and shakers together under one roof. It was actually open, night sky, but uh, thanks for that. Oh, and my date was the most fun, Kat Burns, also previous podcast guest. Kat, going anywhere with you is the same as going to a party. And going to a party with you, especially Chris's 40th birthday party, that was awesome. I wish I had like a party favor, like a noisemaker of some sort right now. That would be appropriate at this moment. Anyways, I digress. That's my win. Now you go. What's going well in your world? Yay! Awesome. Congrats. I am celebrating you from the sidelines. I don't really go to many sporting events, so I don't really know how that works, but I do know how to celebrate people, and I know that you're crushing it. Keep going. <sighs> now prepare yourself, my friend. Prepare to be a fan of dance, of storytelling, and of the one and only Tobias Elhammer. Shit. That was for you. <laughs> I wasn't prepared, but it's so good. Good, good, good. Hey, oh my God. Tobias, welcome to Words That Move Me. What the hell? Thank you. <laughs> We're here. Thank you. We are here. And Riz is there. Yes, yes. Um, I want to say this has been a long time coming, but I haven't even known you that long. So this has been That's like true. several months coming. Thank you for carving out time. You're jet lagged. Because um, where are you coming back from? Um, I just came back from China and then Denmark and then Italy. So I'm a little a short a little journey. Stirred. Short journey through Middle Earth. That's what my brain offered Literally. me when you said that. Yeah, all the way to Mordor. So we're mutual Lord of the Rings fans. We're mutual fans of dance and we're fans of each other. This is going to be Hell very yes. fun. Uh, tradition on the podcast. This is how we start. Everybody starts this way. Mm -hmm. You have to introduce yourself. Tell us everything you want us to know about you. Ooh, what to know? Um, I am from Denmark originally. Yes. Um, from Denmark originally. I also lived in London for eight years okay. prior to moving to Los Angeles. Obviously, I dance, uh -huh. I choreograph, uh -huh. I teach. I love movement. I love creating in general. I love exploring boundaries. And um, I love connecting with people. Yes. Exploring boundaries. Mm-hmm. Not like... Pushing boundaries. Exploring. Exploring. Them. We're going to yep. navigate up and to that. No, I would say that you push boundaries. I've watched a lot of dance, right, in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot to surprise me or to get a genuine jaw on the floor moment. And when I watch your shit, that's what happens. <laughs> like, wow. How, like, how and whoa. And anytime I show your work to someone, I, I see the same thing. Like, Ah, oh, ah, wow. 
So <laughs> yes, I would say push, explore and push boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lovely introduction. Uh, yeah. Is that it? Do Anything you, else? I don't think, well, then I'm also in many ways, um, I would say a nerd about movement, a nerd about so many things. I love comics. I collect comics. These are the things no one actually knows about me. Well, collect comics almost, and, almost well except for a few i guess except for people who take your class i think Fair. you've been open about like uh the things that light you up i've only taken your class a few times but yeah you're very generous with your students and i think uh it's like taking someone's classes knowing them mm -hmm. but i think you share you've shared a little bit of that before but i don't mean yeah. to stop you carry on you're a nerd oh full-on nerd i love obviously like you said lord of the rings love mm -hmm. harry potter um, I love reading. I love movies. I'm a fan of storytelling in general, and it's always been the main thing that has pushed me throughout my entire journey, I think. Mm -hmm. From the get-go up until the point where, like even when I was 11 years old, um, I was I was writing a lot. I wrote a book in, the, in my hand. It was like 600 pages or some shit like that. And that narrative sort of transitioned into dance at a later age, and it's been that way ever since, just exploring storytelling in different ways smooth transition let's mm -hmm. talk about transitioning into dance because oh. i think if i'm not mistaken uh that breaking was your first introduction to dance or your first love of correct dance. Oh, there's a good pun there. Is that how you broke in to dance wow. sorry i can't really but um <laughs> ah, oh when marty was here Riz we were just it. talking about is that a funny joke for you <laughs> she's asleep <laughs> you're a punk <laughs> When Marty was here, we were talking about like, oh, we're old. I mean, mm -hmm. he's older, but the words that I use aren't the words that young people use anymore. And I just made a pretty bad pun about breaking in. Tell me about it. How did you mm. find breaking? Is it still a love of yours? It's... Who were your influences? That was four questions. You can choose yeah. any of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely still a big love. It's It was the starting point for me. The way that I got introduced to uh, breaking was... Um, my parents took me to watch a show in Sweden um, by a street dance group called Bounce. Mm -hmm. And in this show, they were fusing different styles. One of the guys called Benke, he, were, he had a solo, and that solo was um, a fusion of, he was doing a lot of breaking, and then he was also tapping into ballet all of a sudden. Mm. And he was switching. And I was watching that, and I was just blown away by how he was able to do that. And then as soon as I went back, we moved, as we moved back to Denmark, I started to pursue breaking. And I went and I took a class and I was the only student there. I mean, just me. And this dude uh, that was teaching the class called Trolls, which is called not trolls? not trolls as in trolls, but oh my the God, name is spelled. <laughs> oh, it's a good B-boy name. I know, right? How about B-boy Cave Troll? B-boy Cave Troll? Come on. It's spelled T. R O E L S. Okay. In Danish, you would just say trolls, mm -hmm. but yeah, trolls. I so guess you were, uh, you got a private lesson. Got basically a private lesson, and he kind of introduced and you me kept to a going. couple of things. Kept going, and then gradually more people joined the class. The first, I remember, still remember the first thing he taught me, which was an elbow freeze. Yes. I was like, yes. Whoa, I can do this. Yes, that's everyone's thought when they, yeah, when they learned that move. That was my thought when I learned that move. Yeah. Uh, I took a break in class at my dance studio. Mm -hmm. um, my teacher was named Fate. Oh, Snappy Doodle. Yeah, he was great. It did have a crush. It he had a crush, a crush on, on fate. fate. For sure. How do you not have a crush on your breaking teacher who's that fair. awesome yeah. and named Fate? Come on. That's it's a dope-ass name. You were how old at that time? 11. Okay. I want to say I was 11. And uh, that was sort of um, the the opening of the freestyle door for me. Then mm -hmm. I started to. I, well, I've always I've always kind of been dancing around, but never enough for me to understand what I was really doing. Uh -huh. So breaking made me sort of understand different pathways, etc. Okay. And uh, yeah, so then I, I battled, I freestyle, had a good time with that, and then and later then it moved on to different things. Okay, I asked Zuse this question earlier. And I'm curious what your answer would be as well, because I have never battled mm -hmm. in my life. And I'm wondering what the moment was like for you when you were like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to battle. I'm going to battle someone. Like, what was that moment? I've never <laughs> in my life felt. In fact, it gives me a slight terror to yeah. think about 
about that, which tells me I really have to do it. I can't wait. I told you to say today I'm going to do it. Yes. Um, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Maybe it's we'll do it happen. together. Do you want to? I, wait, be, are you, maybe, wait, do you want to battle or do you no, want no, to no. just battle? Same team. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. That will be fun. Oh, my God, yes. Be okay, she's going to hold an event, a locking event. She's creating an event here in mm -hmm. LA. And um, I just saw wrist rolls paw. Mm -hmm. oh, it's oh, really cute. Okay, no. we're back. We're back. It's so Ooh, it's really cute. I'm gonna just snap a quick photo. Sure. New new dog mom over here. Oh god. <laughs> we'll be we'll be right back. Where were we? We're gonna battle. Oh, mm. what was the moment? Explain to me the moment when you were like, mm, I wanna do this against someone. Funny, because there wasn't particularly a moment where I went, now I wanna battle someone. I was just gradually being introduced to just sessioning and, and exchanging. Mm -hmm in the class space of mm -hmm. breaking because that's the nature of the style, you know? It or that was, was how it was introduced to you anyways. Yeah, exactly. And it was just the way it was. Like, we took rounds and everyone, we were in, I would say the last, I'm really trying to think how it was because it's been... It was a kind wow. of a long time ago. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> but it, maybe the last 10 or 15 minutes, we had been, up until though that end of the class, we had been going over different techniques, etc. And then the goal was to test it all out at the end in a free open circle space. Uh -huh. And then we all had to go out. Got it, got it, got it. And and then eventually that transitioned and then I started to actually kind of, um, I got introduced to the to the battle, the Danish battle scene, which was very low key because I lived in a small village outside of Copenhagen. So it wasn't even the grand scale. Mm -hmm. But I started to sort of battle alongside my, my teacher cool. eventually. Uh-huh. And that was just kind of how it happened. So he sort of helped me through that whole process and made me feel okay and comfortable with it. Nice. So I wasn't too, you know, scared about it or like too yeah. anxious. But I would say now more than ever, like now I'm actually more anxious about doing it. Oh, yes. Which is fascinating. 100%. That's just the nature. Because back then I was just so green to the whole industry and to the whole world. So I just, I wasn't scared about throwing myself out there. But now in a way... It's a little different, you know. Even though mm. you preach, because mm. I've been there to hear it, mm -hmm. uh, that, oh man, I'm going to get the words back ass words. Um, perfection is the enemy of greatness. Ah, is that what it is? What is it actually? What is death it? Death of greatness. The death of greatness. That's what I usually say. Same well, shit. Well, it doesn't mean that you won't be afraid. Like, you're a person who actually believes that. I know you yeah. actually believe that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you don't want to be fucking perfect slash great mm -hmm. when you do anything mm -hmm. and i think thinking that way is part of why you are great is because you strive for like damn near close to perfection mm -hmm. or we'll call it greatness mm -hmm. but yeah like i i'm similar in that it took a long time for me to rewire for myself the idea that failing is actually winning like yeah. doing it wrong and losing 100%. is the right direction. Like, yes, that, more that. Yeah. But no matter how many times that lesson gets underlined and no matter how deeply I believe it, I really do still want to be perfect and I do still want to win and I do <laughs> think that I would lose <laughs> yeah. if when battle happens because it's not... I know I'm also realizing my absolute naivete and even asking, like, what was the moment you decided to battle? It's like asking somebody that grew up in dance class, what was the moment you decided to go in groups? Yeah, right, yeah. It's like, it's the moment when, when you're there because that's the water that you're swimming in. Happens. You just do it. Eventually. It's just, it's just not the water I swim in. So I'm like, tell me everything about that. But also because now for you, it'll probably be more of a, it'll be more of a decision to do it right. rather than... It's not going to happen naturally. No, exactly. In my world, I will seek it out. Yeah. I will sign up. I exactly. will do it. Well, first I will train, yeah, then yeah, I will yeah. seek it out, then I will sign up, then I will do it. Um, but I'm excited oh, about shit, it. Let's, I can't wait for that. Yeah, okay, but let's team battle for sure because I will need emotional yeah. and maybe even physical sport. Yeah. Which brings me to, ooh, another good segue. Let's go. Um, I love that breaking was kind of your uh, first love and introduction to dance because mm -hmm. I found it the mo one of the most challenging forms for myself personally, and that is because my motto is strength is not my strength. Mm. And I found so much limitation from what I saw about breaking that I loved, that I wanted to do, physically could not do it. Mm -hmm. Part of that is like strength based, but sure. I also blame my proportions a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm all legs. Mm -hmm. 
mm. which makes a windmill really act really really hard yeah and i'm so i'm all arms all legs and no torso which actually means like i can <laughs> i can i have a lot of space like when i'm doing floor work i have a lot of space underneath me i think i could probably be good at that maybe power moves not so much but anyways i stopped breaking because it was hard mm. and at a certain point in my life i liked doing hard things like i would take brian friedman's class and i wanted mm. it to be the hardest combo that he had and i wanted to you know roast it and i yeah. you know fell in love with things because they were advanced like there was a chapter of my life and i've told you this before mm -hmm. but there was also a time when I, I don't know what the shift was actually, but I had this great dislike, like a distaste for things that were hard for hard's sake. Mm -hmm. Like hard just to be hard. Like yeah. can I add another eanda in there yeah. just to like, you know, fuck people up. Yeah. And I hated that. I would actively roll my eyes when I saw that. Um, and like in my recent life you're one of the first people or one of the few people i should say mm. whose work is i think objectively intricate i think you could ask anyone like dance experience or not show them your work and ask is that intricate and they would say yes yeah. um and i love yeah. it i don't roll my eyes at it i think yes. it's wonderful i think it's like meant to be i almost said perfect did you see me catch myself i, I did you see should that zoom in on it. real um uh oh i forgot did i tell you in the email ahead of time be prepared to be flattered uh no oh, okay. but I'm, I being, I'm very much being flattered <laughs> i feel it all i'm being very danish okay. about it but oh, i'm good, super good. super oh, flattered put that in the parking lot because i want to come back to that yes where i was getting at is have you all you started with breaking which i think is also objectively hard mm -hmm. anatomically spinning on your head is not natural yeah i never so, got there but yes no head spins ever no. okay i tried i oh. do want to know what your like moves are Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's start there. Ready, set, go. Breaking moves, go. I was extremely good at top rock. Uh, I can and, see and that. And a lot of, basically, basically just a lot of footwork, a lot yes. of six steps, all those things. Yes. I was able to pull up a pretty decent windmill and I some coin, coin drops. Yes, I can see it. Um, et cetera, et cetera. But mostly my strength was that I was fast. Yeah. As fuck. Yes. Yeah, I had to cool. say fuck. It just felt good, so. Um. That's that was funny. It. Your friend Cody also mentioned his speed as being mm -hmm. one of his kind of superpowers. Yeah. It's always, it was always this thing that seemed to be impressive, you know, for people that was watching it. Yeah, so yeah. I just leaned into that while also having a mild panic attack dancing in front of people for the first time. So I was just like, <gasps> and oh, right. So that actually fuels the develop strength. Develop that sort of technique. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so funny. But you were on beat. You were just moving fast. Yeah. Most of the time I was on beat. Interesting. I want to see that footage of you not dancing on beat. Yeah. Yeah. But it's excitement. Like that happens a lot. It still happens to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Go for on. The, for the real fans out there. Ooh, the real fans. When Marty taught Like I Love You in class recently, you were there. Yes. I was. I always feel like uh, Dorothy from The from the Little Mermaid. That's <laughs> 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 cool. No, it's fine. Um, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, when I say, and you were there, and you were there, and you were there. But anyways, you were there. I was there. I... It was my number one objective, my chief goal, my only focus in that class mm -hmm. was to be so deep in the pocket that I actually like fall out the pant leg. Like I wanted to be as close to late as possible without actively being late. Mm -hmm. I was blown away by it. I kept watching you okay. over and over again in all okay. those groups. Go Thank on. you. I can but tell wait. you have a point. Sorry. I do have a point. And my point is that if you're a true Fan and have watched the clip that I posted on Instagram once. <laughs> I start the combo early. Uh, yeah, I know. But only I only know because you told me. <laughs> oh, did I tell you that? Already? Yes. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, I start it's not early. Like I caught it. Like I ah. I start early and I have a verbal outburst about it. I say ah, like you can hear me on the tape. I, I word shit. I didn't interesting. know that. Yeah. I okay. gotta watch it back. So, uh, my actual question that I was trying to ask is, have you always been attracted to things that are challenging? Mm -hmm. Is it intrinsic to you that it be hard in order to be good? Is it like, is that part of like what lights you up? Does it have to be hard? It's a good question. It's almost like you do a podcast. It is, right? Um, <laughs> yes, 100%. To an extent, I think when I'm creating a lot of the time, I use the space where I'm creating to explore my boundaries 
And in, in that process, that's when I challenge myself. I'm also, so I'm not just creating material in order to just create, I'm also creating to push myself. And that happens every single time I create anything. Mm -hmm. Which means that obviously it gets harder and harder. Once I've created one routine and I figured out, figured out all these new uh, pathways and challenging ways to do things, and then I start to conquer those things, mm -hmm then that becomes the norm for me. Then it becomes organic movement eventually. Mm -hmm. And then once I choreograph something ne the next time, then I'm just starting from there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it continuously just becomes more and more tricky and awkward for a lot of people when they jump in at first because it's building on so many layers of yeah, conquering yeah. awkwardness. But I get such a high out of finding new pathways and discovering things that I wasn't able to do before and sort of it makes me feel alive in a way that i can't that i don't think a lot really tops that sort of whoa i just came up with that shit i wasn't able to do that a week ago yeah sometimes there'll be it'll be a week before i'm able to actually pull any of Ooh. that shit off Ooh, that's cool mm -hmm. uh but i think you might be missing something go on may i show you a blind yes. spot yes i don't think boundaries exist just in the difficult direction mm. like in the harder direction there's there's also an edge on the simple side. Yeah, this is true. So I wonder what you would look like if you pushed the edge of simplicity. It's fair. Of easy. Yeah, I've. Like, could I you? Find it you hard. could. I know that you could, but it would be. I bet that you've strengthened that muscle so much. Like the edge, the edge, the edge. Yep. The harder, the harder. You know so well what that feels like, and the reward that you just explained. You're going after that so hard because it feels Every time. so good, and there is equal reward in the opposite direction 100%. which is how many step touches can i do without losing anyone's attention yeah like how simple can i get mm -hmm. before i am boring yep that's a an, a challenge in another way um yeah. that i would definitely show up to see how you answer that i mean this is very true and every single time i try to do anything that's fairly simple less is more approach it is a challenge for me mm -hmm. it's it's it just you want to fill it because eventually it. i'm i'm addicted to that feeling uh -huh. of of conquering something new and 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 but it's new that there high. too that's new it you'll is. have it it's just in it the is. Other and sometimes sometimes i'm able to go down that that route but it's way more difficult than the other yeah just because i've done that more. It's stronger. It's the muscle is stronger. Correct. I get it. I choreographed uh, once at Old ML. Mm -hmm. It might have been on the spot. Oh, snap. Anyways, the combo was entirely pre-dance movement. Okay. So if you watch like footage from Millennium of people doing going in groups, yeah. all the moves that they do before the combo starts, like turn your hat the other way or like, yeah. like get the shirt Getting right, adjust ready. the pants. Oh, oh. Adjust the microphone. Yep. <laughs> um, this was two minutes straight of choreographed pre-dance, and it's hysterical. It's a big. It's a joke. I love it, and I love a joke too. Actually, somebody. Why I don't remember why this came up recently, but somebody asked me what I would do with a million dollars, and I was like, honestly, jokes. Like I would just play jokes. I would buy really elaborate costumes and put on joke shows and just be playing jokes all the time. Yes. This is my answer. How about you? It was not one of the questions that are, is on my list. What I would but... do with a million dollars? Yes. Ooh, I would buy a lot of dogs, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Okay. I don't even know. That's a, that's a beautiful question. Yeah. Maybe I would create movies. Okay. Well, I'll you, try with a million some. bucks, you'd probably create one. Create, one. <laughs> create a low budget one movie. <laughs> low budget single movie. You yeah. know what I would do actually? Right now, if you ask me that question, I would. Wow, this is true. I, this is an honest truth. I would stop taking new work mm -hmm. and I would train. Nice. I, I was like, I wish I could get paid to train. And if I got a million dollars, I, you I would. You would be able to. Oh my God. Just go, go, go. Yeah. I feel that. And just see I would love to do that. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I'll join you. Mm -hmm. That'll be nice. I definitely need need that. Do you feel a void? Because you've been teaching yes. a lot. I always right feel now. A, a, like I can tell when I've been uh, pouring out mm -hmm. instead of pouring in. 
Yo. I can tell when it's time, when I need to refill, when I'm Hell stale, yeah. when I'm tired of hearing myself say the same lessons. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I need to be training. I feel that heavily right now. Yeah. But I also, obviously, I love teaching, but I do read it because I just finished my my second week of my intensive. I mm -hmm. did two weeks in August. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And that led, that led into uh, then going to China and et cetera, Denmark, Italy, and then got back and leaving again tomorrow. So it's been a lot of teaching. Mm -hmm. So I do really miss just Being getting class. stuff. I know, you know, getting, oh my God, better than a movie. And I also love mm -hmm. movies, but going to class, mm -hmm. you get to watch live yes. a dance show happen. 100%. And also dance your actual body. Yeah. And also learn, are you kidding me? Dance <laughs> class is the best place on earth. I'm in, a, I'm in a slightly opposite. I have been teaching a lot, but relative to recent years, mm. I am more in class now than I have been like in probably 10 years which is awesome awesome yeah like to be not, people would be mad at me for saying but like nearing 40 mm. I'm like you I guess you could still call me mid, mid am I officially mid to late 30s if I'm 37 like mid to late do you have a saying Debatable. for that in Danish we, we say mid to late 30s mm, no okay we Not don't really. talk about age. <laughs> we, we don't, Denmark, we don't speak about age at all. <laughs> I, I might a, be moving. Um, it's just a number. Yeah, I think it's a cool. <laughs> I'm having a. I'm having a. A renaissance in terms of training. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. I love that's it. It's exactly what we all should be doing. Okay. Um, Go on. I don't know if that's true. I, making is important. Training mm. is great. Making mm. is also great. Good lord. It's as if we emailed about this. All right. Which we did, but you didn't read it. I didn't it. read so any of it. That's that's a pimp move. Um, who says that? People who hang out with Marty a lot. I did want to talk about um, <laughs> and that's a good segue into a little peek at your creative process. Let's do it. I I am still finding my own, so I'm always curious to hear mm. about other people's. Uh, talk me through beginning to end creating a thing. How does it work for you? And we'll say most of the time. Yes, that's. I think that's good to say ahead of it. It's definitely, I guess it's usually the structure, but it might differ sometimes. But what I always do is that I, I listen to the track, obviously to the music. The music is the, is the main thing that speaks to me before anything. And it kind of gives me an idea of where I want things to go and what I feel from it, which is the most important factor, mm -hmm. what it makes me feel. Yes. So it starts with the feeling of the music and then it leads into me kind of freestyling but structured. So I have a freestyle session of maybe the two first eight counts. Uh -huh. And um, then I kind of, I, I try to do it again and I try to revisit elements that felt good or just necessarily maybe I feel like it's a little challenging, a little more difficult and it's it interesting or... Then I go back to the track. So there's like this little, this little ping pong of feeling, challenge, and and groove and freestyle in that first segment of the session. And that's all freestyle? Do you film it? Do you watch it? Do you I don't mirror do, it? No, I don't. I don't. I don't do it with a mirror. I stay away from a mirror always. Uh -huh. The mirror is my enemy in many ways. The floor is my best friend. The mirror is my worst enemy. Interesting. Up until the point where I start to feel like... I'm happy with what it sort of is, then I'll take it to the mirror. But that doesn't happen until I want to clean it up. Yep, yep. So I, I, sum, I basically over, it could take me one day, it could take me two, three, four, mm -hmm. it could take me two hours. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all different. But it all starts the same way. It starts with the feeling, then it starts with the groove, and then I add challenges, not just to add the challenges, but to to challenge myself in that process, uh -huh. if that makes sense. Yeah. To explore and see where things can go in different ways. And yeah. if it feels a little too organic for my body, if it feels a little too natural, uh -huh. then I will go back again and I'll revisit and go. How can I make this unnatural? It's too predictable for Incredible. me. Incredible. That's nuts. I, that's, Every time, yeah. That's I, kind that, of the way. I, I believe that that is exactly what creates the effect that I mm. have when I watch it, which is like, that's un that's unbelievable. Why would you that? What, oh my god! And now we're ugh. like yeah. that's that process. The yeah. result of that process is what happens when I watch your shit. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. I mean, it's definitely not a goal that I go in and say I want it to be challenging. But if it feels too repetitive, 
or if it feels like it's something that I've done before, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, then I, I always want to to change it up somehow. Yeah, catch yourself in habits and then... Break them. Break them, yeah. And then the second half of it is to clean clean it all up, uh-huh. which means that that's the only time when I'll... I'll rarely use a mirror. I'll probably just put my phone down or an iPad and then just record myself doing it. Mm-hmm. I'll try to add some shapes and I'll s- and maybe some arms, some lines. Uh, but I do that prior to filming it and then then I'll film it and then I'll look back at it and I'll adjust. Mm-hmm. It's kind of how it happens. And then I'll try to test it out on bodies, mm-hmm. only then. Mm-hmm. When I'm somewhat satisfied with that. Mm-hmm. That's the process, most of the time. Or sometimes, you know, there's always those magic moments where it just flows and you don't yes. have to do all those stepping stones. Uh, but I do find it. Flow. Yeah, flow, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, the I, ephemeral, <laughs> the elusive. I mean, yes, it's, it kind of, that's a, it's rarer for me that the flow, things yeah. just fall out. But when they yeah. do, what it's a wild. gift. And also to not question it. Just because it fell out doesn't mean that. Well, it doesn't mean that the other way is wrong, right? No, like exactly. you've had a lot of gratifying work and probably pieces that you really love mm-hmm. that didn't just fall out. Like 100%. the fact that it was simple or natural, the fact that it flowed doesn't mean necessarily that it's the best. Sometimes it's just it just gets delivered to you somehow. It just flows into your mind. And sometimes you have to kind of work for it to happen. Yeah. And I think it's important for me, at least as an artist, to have somewhat a structure to that approach a little bit. Because mm-hmm. that way... I can't always rely on it to just hit me. No. Sometimes no. you just got to create something. Uh, have you read Twyla Tharp's The Creative Habit? No. I have it here. Well. It's on the it's on white white stack. You want me to read it now? Somewhere we can pause everything and I'll just... You should take it. Down. I'll take it. Um, Where the fuck is it? There she is. In between white fragility and nonverbal communication. <laughs> Welcome to my bookshelf. Love it. We're, you're leaving with it. Um... Except I have on good intel mm. that some of that book is full of shit. Oh. She's all about, like, the book is called The Creative Habit and how showing up for your work is an essential part of the creative process. Being disciplined, being regimented, not trusting that it will just come, but actually mm. assuming that it will not. Yeah. Putting yourself in the place all the time so that it does happen yeah. because you are always doing it. Like she talks about being at the gym at 5 a.m. every morning and then going to the Mm. studio after that. But she does have, she talks about an exercise that I have borrowed. I haven't done it in class. Actually, I do. I do it in class pretty often. She calls it egg. Egg. And egg is uh, a challenge, a task where you would put yourself, your body into the shape of an egg. And then she asks, because she, Twilight doesn't dance her own stuff much anymore. She's working with bodies. But she will ask you to crack or to break in a way that you never have before. So oh. like I could naturally come out of an egg like right, left, right, left. Yeah. Or I could break out of an egg like shark fin, swim. <laughs> eh. And that's how I might break the egg today. So in her book, sorry, wrist, did I scare you? <laughs> Tiny like, wrist roll. <laughs> oh, God. She's got her arms folded under her body right now, bro. Like, I'm looking at her left paw on the right side of her body. Y'all. She's the cutest. I'm telling you, the video format of the podcast is what's up. I can't believe it took me so long to do this. Oh. What's up, Riz? She knows we're talking about her. Yeah, she does. Okay. Look um, at that. She's going to pose now. Yo. She's turning towards camera. Listen. She, she knows what's up. She's, she's her mother's daughter. There you go. She loves peanut butter. She knows when the camera's rolling. Although sometimes I don't. You like uh, peanut butter? I love peanut butter. Oh, interesting. Have we not? I mm. Everything. On everything? Eh, try me. Pizza? Mm-hmm. I would dip crust in pizza. I, I wouldn't put peanut butter like on the cheesy, saucy part, but I have definitely gone and got a spoonful of peanut butter to enjoy with my pizza crust. Oh what my about? God. Broccoli. A har- yes. A har- broccoli? Wow. Yes, okay. I put it on broccoli. Hard boiled egg. Ooh. Wow. I know. You found it. Okay, and we're back to egg. There you go. So... She the te- the the exercise of egg that was great. Um, the exercise of egg is to kind of, as you mentioned, push boundaries, break patterns. Yeah. And once you have done something that you have never done before, there are more po- possibilities. Mm. So when I was struggling with freestyle, and when any of my students struggle with freestyle, 
instead of continuing on, like trying to find the next step, I tell them to stop and egg. Or either that, it's either egg or like put yourself in a shape that you've never been in before. Nice. And then whatever happens from here is going to be freestyle just because I've never done that. That's dope. You feel me? That's a great shout. Why did egg come up again? Creativity, showing up, yeah, trusting the flow. Out. It came from it's, the book because he was talking about an egg. Yes, that was my favorite takeaway from from that. She has a couple other tasks and thoughts that are really useful. But yeah, the idea being creativity is a muscle just like anything else. You need to exercise it and be regimented with it. Yeah, I am for less sure. so. I like... How long have you been teaching at Millennium? Since February 2022. That's when I officially started. Okay, that's not that long. But mm. you were like religiously every Friday for the most part. For sure. And how often do you think you teach new material? Um, I It depends. Mostly I will teach the same routine over the course of either two or three classes. Okay. So that's a year of every mm. three weeks, something every two or three weeks, something new. Yeah. Your make muscle is strong. Yes. I I am envious. I don't I, I don't definitely don't create combos that often. I might I move that often. Yeah. And I create work mostly for other people mm -hmm. often, but like combos just to teach quite rarely. I'm kind of envious and inspired for sure but to, it's, yeah. to make that ask of myself and see what it's happens. not always been the way i mean i always loved creating and i think even before i moved to la and i started to and i decided to actually teach weekly mm -hmm. i always just taught whenever i wanted back in london mm -hmm. whenever i felt like i had something to give mm -hmm. but in order to to like you said push my creativity on a regular and see where it would lead me i said you know what let me try to do that in Los Angeles and see where it leads. Ugh. It's always been something I love doing because it's just free space. You yeah. know, there's there's no, no rules. There's no anything. I get to do whatever yeah. the hell I want. Nobody's telling you what song to use. Yes. That you have to have a certain person in front for this exactly. chorus or for that verse exactly. or whatever. Yeah. It's just there. It's just freedom. It's, it's so much freedom. Listening to what I want to do and what feels right in the moment and what song speaks to me. And then I get to do that shit. And that's a part of why it's getting easier, I guess. But then there's another thing. Funny, I was actually talking to EC Twins about that. EC Twins, some of my good, good friends from Slovenia that I've danced a lot with back mm -hmm. in the days. And when we always used to create together, I always told them to that we should try to finish on a high mm. so that we are excited to return to the project. Mm. Because sometimes when you're creating something and you find yourself dried out and you go, oh, okay, now I have no more energy, uh, then it's like you don't want to return to that feeling again mm -hmm, the next mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. But if you finish as soon as there's something dope you just made, then you're excited to return to that dope thing you just made. And that's been also something that I've been trying to incorporate in my process. I love that, taking it. Similar, but different. Thanks. Um, I think it might also be a Twyla thing that, uh -huh. that where she says, oh, fuck, I could be wrong. Um, the idea is in fact to end mm. before you know you're done. So like actually leave it definitely on a high note, yeah. but leave it with a few more steps left to go that you know you have to take. Mm -hmm. So that the next day you come in and the first steps are there. Yes. Instead of like, what am I gonna do today? What, are we, what do we do now? Like, what do we do? So let's take like last night, for example, Riley was helping me out deliver for some movement for animators mm -hmm. and we had like the deadline was that night so we had to fully ship it but if the deadline was tomorrow yeah i would have said okay i know for this last section that i want to do a move that uh turns around to face upstage and we just fake bow to the back and then realize that okay sorry there are no it's the front yeah. that's the other way going there. <laughs> and so we'll figure that out tomorrow because I, I know what we want to do instead of just like oh let's just finish it tonight which I'm tempted to do because mm. I love finishing things. Mm -hmm. I would leave that for the next day so that you get the ball rolling the next day and then everything else can flow with it. Mm. I really like that idea. Yeah. In theory. Uh, in practice, <laughs> I don't in practice I don't do it so much, but in theory it sounds really good. Hell yeah. Do you have any other work hacks like or or things, tricks, 
maybe if you ever find yourself in a block or something like that that work for you like egg for example like an egg um i i usually don't have a lot of blocks when i'm creating if i'm being honest i love that answer so much <laughs> i was on really. i was on a panel with somebody who answered that they were like what do you do when you have creative block and she said i don't <laughs> and i was like oh wow yeah it just doesn't happen to you that much i guess when i'm creating to create for myself and explore aka when i'm creating material for when i'm teaching etc no, I, there's rarely a block, but there will be blocks when it's more professional maybe or it's something that I know that I'm, I have to fit it within a specific box. Mm -hmm. But then I'll have a bit of, um, I guess you could call it a textbook material that I can always tap into in a way. Like vocabulary, like vocabulary moves, like things, phrases, yeah. That just speaks and is, is easy for me to, to transition into, excuse me. He was saying transition into... Exactly. As they were transitioning out of yes. my neighborhood at a high rate of speed. I love it. Um, Riz, when we're on walks, she really gets interested. Are we having this talk right now? Yes. <laughs> I'm very much into what Riz is doing. She gets really interested in people <laughs> coming and going. Uh -huh. And she will wait for them to come. And then she will watch them go until they're far enough away that she knows they got where they're going safe. And then she can carry on. Same <laughs> is true with cars. If she watches somebody get in their vehicle, she'll wait. For them to pull out and down the street, and then she'll go. Oh my God. And you know what's funny? What? Also, so do I. I sit there and I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll blame this on you, but. But you do the same? Yeah. A match made in heaven. I'm, what up? I'm sort of, in general, I'm curious about people. Uh, I guess podcast is a perfect example of it. But that makes sense. Yeah. I care about like what drives people and what where they go. And mm. I think it's pretty clear you're driven by challenge, you're di driven by expanding. Uh, what is possible for you and for people. I think mm. you've extended that beyond yourself and into your students. Mm. Um, well, that's great. That being, makes me happy. Like, I don't think that you being a regular teacher is for you. Mm. I think that, I mean, it's a bonus that you get to a free space to exercise your stuff, but yeah. just just speaking from being in the room, you're very generous and, you, and the consistency, it's not easy to be that consistent. It's, no, it's tough. Unless you see people coming back and doing better. That's the that's best. That's actual the best. That's the best. That's the actual best. Oh and my that, God. yes, that, that makes being that kind of committed a lot easier because that the reward of that is fantastic. Which is why I think I can still do it to the, like after starting in February, 2022, mm -hmm. honestly, I'm, it's tough. And there's moments where I go, Oh my God, can I pull this Am off? Am I still doing this? You love it. You're lit up about I it. I love it so you much. You love it so much. Every so single Friday is my favorite day of the week. Yes. It I, just is. Yo, I tell people this, I talk about things being difficult and things being easy a lot when I coach, because mm. as you know, the way you think about something has a dramatic effect on the way you experience it. So if I think teaching every week is really, really hard, it will be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if I think that teaching every week is an awesome gift, then it will yeah. be. And I will be a gift. And it's it will be a so gift. so true. It's very so true. I'm glad that you still think it's a gift because I love that you teach. Oh, it's, it definitely is a big gift. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to go anywhere right now. You cool. know, it's, it's great. I'm just saying it, 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 class is one of those things that will be there forever, mm -hmm. but and my finger to the wind tells me that your regular class schedule will be interrupted. Yeah, you probably, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it were to happen. There's obviously elements and things that I would be open. It's not that the Friday class is like the thing that I will do and no matter what, but I just love it. It will it's, always, class will always be there. And I think millennium will always be there. This is Could very you, true. You know what? That's something we take for granted. Mm -hmm. If the pod, if the podcast, if the pandemic, <laughs> P words are hard. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's that. <laughs> You're doing great. Uh, Give it up for Dana. Let's go. Studios, spaces where we can do what we do. Yes. And I like to say this all, I say this all the time because, um, my mom is from a very, my mom is from a big family. I am from a big family, but my, <laughs> it's going really well. My mom is one of 11. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
My mom is one of 11 yeah. and she has, she's got two brothers who are both professional snowboarders, mm-hmm. which funny enough gave me false confidence yes. in my skill as a snowboarder early on in my teenage life. My first time going snowboarding, I got good fast because my uncles taught me and because I'm a person who understands how to use my body. I was going really fast and I fell really hard and I really broke my tailbone and I couldn't dance for a month and some change and I had to sit on a little inflatable donut thing and I hated that and so I never did that again. No, No, thank you. I'm good. Mm -hmm. But anyways, the requirements for them to dance are mountain, snow, board, boots, bindings, jacket, pants, Helmet goggles, thank you, Higgins, <laughs> to keep a complete list. And the requirements for me to dance are literally my body. Yeah. I don't even need music. But spaces are easy to take for granted, big spaces. Because when I create here, I create this size. And I'm pointing at my studio over there. I'll show you someday. I couldn't have created the opening number for La La Land here. No. And actually, most dance studios couldn't have accommodated that. We we worked on that outside, so bad example. But having a space where many people can move their bodies and listen to music literally shaking the walls and floor, that is a special thing. And we are so lucky that we have that. Communities. It will not always be there. We have mm-hmm. to feed those things. I agree. Great. Definitely agree. Okay, are you ready for the next segment? Go. It's funny you say go because... Oh, snap. Hey, don't put it on. You know what's happening. <gasps> Holy shit. <gasps> Whoa, I'm back. you're back? I'm back. That's crazy. I can't believe it happened. This is this I'm going to require my phone for. Okay. okay. Bring it. Uh, the segment, this segment is called Obscure Lord of the Rings Trivia. <gasps> Are you ready? Yes. Feel free to play along at home. This is for everyone, not just for you. But I'm pretty sure you guys playing at home are about to be roasted because this guy. Do you ever watch Stephen Colbert? Watch me fuck up. What? S- Stephen Colbert is a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Huge. And sometimes he'll do trivia on the show. What? He's Oh, it's ridiculous. He's incredible. I'm If I'm not mistaken, he actually learned Elvish. No way. I, that might be full of shit. But it's like actually that level. He's insane. Damn. And he has Kate Blanchett on as a guest once. And he's, oh, it's riveting. It's so good. That's okay. wild. Okay. Elvish. I learned orc language. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. Okay, this is not part of the... (laughs) Oh, can we just like circle back? Another one of the things that I really like about you is that you make being a fan look cool. No. And there are people on the internet who do this very well, but I think that there for a while, at least on my end of the entertainment industry, Mm. the F word is kind of a bad word. Mm. Oh, you know, she's a fan. Like, look out. <laughs> They're a fan. Uh-huh. And I think that that's a shame because I think it's very cool to get excited about yes, stuff. Yes, it is. Okay. <sighs> Mary and Pippin. Mary and Pippin. They run into Sam and Frodo mm-hmm. when Sam and Frodo are on their way out of the Shire. They're stealing from who? Oh, come on. Uh, it's the ste- stealing from a farmer. Uh huh. Farmer man. Farmer hobbit. Keep I, I going. don't remember Keep the name. Keep going. You're so close. Oh, farmer Come hobbit. On. Farmer. F- Come farmer. On. I'm really rooting for you. Yeah. No, I don't have oh. this one. <laughs> that was hard. Not even close. No. Okay. Should I? Should I just keep keep going? Go or? on to the okay. next. Yeah. Do you it's have okay. it? You can next. I mean, you have oh, the answer absolutely. there. Absolutely. That one. Okay. Because here's the difference Wait, between you and I. When did you watch the movie? That's my question. Um. Well, two nights ago with Riz to, to make sure that she's a part of this family. Because if she didn't like it, it'll be it's back to the rescue. Really? I don't think it'll be I'm, that. No. no, I'm kidding. She did fall asleep. But to her defense, the movie's quite long. I can, I mean, I've seen it 14 times. It's also the now. best one, in my opinion. The Fellowship. Oh, Out of the hard. three. Well, if you like a lot of battle, then The Two Towers is your favorite. Yeah, but it's just, it establishes all the like, characters. And if you like Viggo Mortensen, then Return of the King is your uh, favorite. And if you like tickle fights, then Return of the King is also your favorite. Because there's like three or four tickle fights in that one. What if you like Legolas? Mm, all. I am a huge Legolas fan. Oh my God. Ooh, we're back. <laughs> Not the ooh. Oh, uh, <laughs> so let me leave for my fantasy. <laughs> and we're back. Um, <laughs> Farmer Maggot. Oh, yeah, well, that was definitely not in my head. The reason, okay, you and I are different in that you actually read the books. 
Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of the films. I think they're perfect. I would not change a thing about them. Specifically, not Orlando Bloom. He can stay. Um, actually, no. Everything about it. I love. I love everything about it. Like, yeah. not not a shot. Not a nothing. Would not a wardrobe element or a like nothing. I love. I love everything about it and the delivery of that line. Um, now I'm gonna lose. I lost the line. <laughs> I have a question. It's for like you. you've been into Farmer Maggot's crop or something like that. Or yeah. That's what Sam says to, to Marion Piven. And so Farmer Maggot, and especially because his name is Maggot and it Farmer, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And so that really stuck with me. Farmer Maggot. I thought I, you I do remember it. it sticking out, but not enough to remember it. Okay, sh- I'll, shall I go a little easier on you now? Maybe. Maybe okay. maybe make me look a little cooler. This one's multiple choice. So you've got oh, it. <clears throat> interesting. Sam, uh-huh. wise Gamgee, uh-huh. is Frodo's A cook. B. Come on. <laughs> Wait for it, because it's actually a trick question. <laughs> B. Gardener. C. Taylor. Or D. Secret boyfriend. <laughs> I think it's D. But I obviously it's Gardner as it's well. But D, it's it's a combination. It's 100% B. One hundred percent secret B, boyfriend. D. Obviously. Oh there's no, less. no way. There's no not. way around that. Secret, oh, Sam. secret boyfriend gardener. Oh Sam. Oh you my God! There's some very there's tender moments. Deep love okay, in there. Okay, okay, okay. But I was gonna include <laughs> this one in, and then I just thought it was too much Sam oriented. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam's Frodo. Uh, Sam's Frodo. Sam's Hobbit girl crush. Do you remember her name? Oh, she's beautiful as well. Mm-hmm. What is her name? I'll give you a hint. Uh huh. I'm not pointing at myself, but I'm pointing at my cheeks. Look to your left by your elbow. Left elbow. Yes. It is something with Rose. Is it Rose? Rosie. Rosie. Mm-hmm. Good job. Rosie. I gave, you, I gave you a pretty hard hint there. This one's also tough. Go on. The inn where the hobbits meet Strider. The inn. It's in... What's the town called? There oh, you'll, you'll know the town. I wouldn't know the town. Oh, wait. Mm. I know the name of the inn. Like the hotel. Meet me I don't at, remember the name of the of at, the village. Oh, you're so close. Meet me at Tana's Inn. Ta-da. Oh my God, you're going down in flames. This yes. is great. I don't remember it. The Inn of the Prancing Pony. Prancing Pony. Prancing Pony. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. You need a re. You need a rewatch. The next one it's you'll get. It's time for a rewatch. The Seems elvish. Like it. The elvish word for friend. Melo. God, that was beautiful. Well delivered. Of course. That was great. This is the way Gandalf says it. That's exactly, it's the only way to say it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's all I have. Do you have any for me? Uh, You will stump me because you. I got one for you. Go. Um, At the Black Gate Mm -hmm. to the entrance of Mordor, Mm -hmm. how many trolls are on top of it? Okay. To operate Woo! it. Oh my God, this is my favorite, maybe my favorite question I've ever been asked legit. <laughs> I love this question. I want to say three. Mm-hmm. Is it three? No. Fuck. It's two. I know that there are the, I really wanted to say three. Okay. It's two. I have another one for you. Go. And this will be hard. Okay. Because it doesn't have to do with the movies? <laughs> is it some might be name? extended edition. I think there's some of it in extended edition. Okay. What I'm really does... bummed I got the trolls one wrong because I love the way they fucking have to push that thing. Yeah, it's dope. It's really cool, but I really thought there were three. I thought there were two like doing a push, and then I thought there was another one like on another side of a wheel or a gear or something. But yeah, I'm just making it harder than it is. I'm Here's doing a Tobias. <laughs> Carry on. Galadriel. What about her? She gives the entire fellowship gifts. Yeah. What does she give to Gimli? Son of Gloin. What does she give to Gimli? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, man. You know, it's, he is kind of my least favorite. Damn. Well, because you can't, because you can't toss him. I'm obviously only a fan of things that you can toss. <laughs> Listen. Go on. He's got some really stiff competition. This is fair. I understand. I mean, personally, Gimli's one of my favorites, but okay. It's cool. Who plays him in the film? 
don't remember. Anyways, go on. Mm-hmm. I'm, the, I'm asking the questions on this oh, podcast. Right right, 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 right. Oh, God. Okay, so Sam gets rope in a box of seasoning. Mm-hmm. Frodo gets sting. No. No? Oh, Mithril. Duh. Mm, no. Oh, oh, the light of mm. duh. Oh my god. Well, when did he get oh he got Mithril from, from from Bilbo. From Bilbo and also Sting from Bilbo. From Bilbo. Oh my goodness. But they're elvish, so you can understand the why I made that fatal flaw. Great, not perfect. Oh my god, I give him those seasons. Is it an a <laughs> this is so funny. I love things that are tiny, obviously. Um, is it like a small axe, like a hatchet, like a magic? Mm, no, but hatchet? it's definitely something small. Oh my God, it's a lock of her hair. Yes, it is. <sighs> there you Thank go. you for that hint. Thank you. I needed that. Um, nice. Anything else? That was pretty good. Um, no, I think no. that was great. We'll That's do this again sometime. Ones, yeah. Okay. Um, final round of questions on the podcast. I'm calling it wrist roll with it. Because just nice. roll with it. It's going to go fast, right? Okay. Favorite character from the Marvel Universe? Iron Man. Okay. Favorite villain from the Marvel Universe? Thanos. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> um, favorite Stan Lee cameo? Oh, my God. Into the Spider-Verse. What, what, uh, what is it? What is it? It's he? when he gives, he's selling Spider-Man suits. He sells oh, one to Miles. That's right. Mm. Oh, cool, and he cool, says, cool. Uh, eventually it fits or something like that. And it's beautiful. That is is very well done. Mm-hmm. Good one. Uh, what's your dance superpower? Um, my mind. Ooh, okay. What's your human superpower? Uh, patience. Nice. Um, mm, you get to do a duet with anyone, living or dead. Who is it? Prince. Nice. Mm. Amazing. Did you notice I chose your color is purple? Yes. Deliberate. Did you also know that in my world there are very few excuses for the color purple? I did know that. Prince I think is, we spoke Prince, about it. Prince is one of them. Prince I do not like the, the color purple. This is a um, kind of a. Have you ever taken on somebody that you admire? Like taken on their taste? Like they have some arbitrary bullshit rule, and then you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, for sure. I'm going to do that for yes. sure. That's me and my favorite artist, Tom Sachs, has a has a beef with the color purple. Uh-huh. He says there is no excuse for the color purple. But he also does love Funk and Prince. And I think that Prince is an excellent excuse for the color purple. I think Actually, so, too. Actually, Purple Rain was supposed to be playing when you came here. Well, I imagined I, it. I forgot. Did you feel as it? I, as Riz came over and said hi, I was like, Purple Rain. It was mm. just there in my head. It's a good one. Have mm. you seen Marty's carnival uh, performance to Purple Rain? No, I actually haven't. Wow. Marty, myself, Kmel, mm. um, Ivan, and and for one performance, also Twitch. Mm. And this was like one of my favorite dance memories is dancing wow. with those friends wow. to that music. Which is almost too much. Actually, here's a question I've been asking a lot of people. It was not on your wrist roll with it. Um, But is there a song that is kind of untouchable to you that you, like, won't approach work-wise because it's too good? Um, Yes, there is. What is it? There's several, honestly. Um, One is Smooth Criminal for me. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, by Michael Jackson, that music video and the choreography is just so phenomenal that I would never, I would, I, I don't even know what I would do. I mean, it's just too good. It's very, so, very good. So iconic. There's, there's others as well, like, you know, like I Love You, stuff good like that. Good one. Yeah, great call. I would call. never, never, ever touch that. <laughs> some things are just, some sometimes, and it's rare, but sometimes you see something that is just so well put. Yeah. That I don't even want to. Yeah. I just want it to be that. You yeah. know, it's good enough like that. I have that too. Mm. Um, okay. That brings us to our final question. Can you handle that? Go for it. What are the words that move you the most? All oh, day. Could be a quote, a poem, a guiding principle, or literally actual just words. I mean, I... Perfection is the death of greatness is one that I always say. 
I had this I, last night. I was teaching and I was talking about how important it is to remind ourselves to connect and exchange energies with dance and as movers mm -hmm. and use that and not forget what what that means. You mean like with each other? Yeah. And at its core, that's what I'm falling more and more in love with. Mm -hmm. I realize is the it's connecting with people in all the different ways. Yes. So connecting and 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 to me that also means love in a lot of ways, you know. Um, so there's many layers to it, but that's definitely one. Just connecting with other humans in all the different ways is one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yes. Allow allow for the mistakes to be there and just be proud of yourself for making them and learn from them and, and move on. And If you go wrong, go wrong strong. <laughs> things like that. <laughs> that I very much believe in, <laughs> for sure. Same. Nice. Same. I think that's... If I sum up the words that move me, yeah. Those were there. Those were several. There's several golden, golden nuggets. Golden nuggets. You should be a Trying. guest on podcasts. You're very good at this. Especially, <laughs> you should host the podcast. Especially for English as a second language. Are you kidding me? Oh, I was about to tap into Danish a couple. You know what was hilarious? Mm. I was back in Denmark and I was having this fun little debate with my parents, and I was saying. Well, I'm kind of the only one here that speaks two languages fluently. And they look at me and they go, oh, it's kind of only one language at this point, hey? And I go, what do you mean? Yeah, your Danish is off. Like, and oh, I was just, damn. I was embarrassed. And I was like, well, what do you mean is off? And then I started to realize how bad it's gotten. Oh, man. Because I don't maintain it. Because you don't ever it. speak it. Do you know anyone here that speaks it? Yes, I know one person. That I still speak with, yeah. Wow. Um, but, well, no, actually two. But even then, it's so often we're in a scenario where there's multiple people speaking English, so mm -hmm. then that's just the language we tap into. Mm -hmm. And I only ever speak Danish when I talk to my parents. Or Whoa, with... they called you out. And I understand it because it's a little, like, I'll, there's this awkward way of, ta of switching between Danish and then English when yeah. I can't really get my point across in Danish. Yeah. And I used to think a certain way about those people back in the day when I was young. I was <laughs> like, oh, they think they're so fancy Hollywood and ooh, da 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 da. With their little dang accents. Danglish. Danglish is yeah. a real thing. Yeah. Um, and now I'm one of them and it just hit me and then. Dang. And I kind of laughed about it and then I really tried to just purely speak Danish for the whole five days I was there and it got a little better. But But. Um, yeah, I remember actually uh, after In the Heights, Anthony Ramos was working on an album or he had to do a track entirely in Spanish mm. and got a coach to coach him on it. I was like, yeah. are you serious? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a mess. My accent is all over the place. I'm like mm -hmm. not good. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's been 10 years of speaking English, so it makes sense. That makes sense. Um, that is another actually great segue into the wrap up. Mm hmm. I'm not sure if there is a direct translation, but how do you say funky in Danish? You would probably just say funky. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you, everybody who's listening and everybody, all of whether you're listening or watching or doing both, um, keep it funky. Yeah. And, and oh, wait, how would you say keep it funky in Danish? Hold the funky. <gasps> like... Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to think about it as well because now I'm Hold super funky? self aware. Hold, uh, do, you can say, Please be me funky, or you can say, Hold the funky. Hold the funky. Hold the funky. Yeah, keep it funky. Thank you for watching, listening. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. This podcast was produced by me with the help of many. Big, big love to our executive assistant and editor, Riley Higgins. Our communications manager is Ori Vajadares. Our music is by Max Winnie, logo and brand design by Brie Reitz, thumbnails and marketing by Fiona Small. You can make your tax-deductible donations to Words That Move Me, thanks to our fiscal sponsor, the Dance Resource Center, and also many thanks to you. I'm so glad you're here, and if you're digging the pod, please share it, leave a review and rating, and if you want to coach with me and the many marvelous members of the Words That Move Me community, visit wordsthatmoveme.com. 
If you're simply curious to know more about me and the work I do outside of this podcast, visit thedanawilson.com.